بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب إله العالمين بالقاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد Dear viewers السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله Thanks all to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I have this blessing to be amongst you discussing the holy verses of Quran and the narrations of Ahlul Bayt alayhim wa salam and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the blessing of the shrines of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam and Abul Fadl Abbas alayhi salam and the holy land of Karbala to hasten the appearance of our beloved Imam Mahdi alayhi ta'ala Fajr Sharif and for us inshallah to understand these holy verses and to be able to apply them to our daily lives. If you have followed us, uh, we have started Surah Al Baqarah. Alhamdulillah, we were blessed to finish Surah Al Hamd. We started Surah Al Baqarah. Uh, we discussed uh, the first ayah, which was Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim already, when we started Surah Al Hamd. And then we talked about Alif Lam Mim. ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين. That the book of Allah subhanahu wa taala is guidance for those who are pious. And the verse, the verses after, comes, they come and they explain the meaning and they elaborate who are those pious people, what are their characteristics. Because we want to be amongst the pious people in order for the Holy Quran to inshallah guide us. We started with the first characteristic which was الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ Pious people who are being guided by the Holy Quran are those people who believe in unseen, who believe in the unseen. Number one, وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةِ That's number two, and they maintain the prayer. And وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ And they spend out of what we have provided for them. Believing in unseen, it's one of the most important elements that divides and differentiates between the believer and the non-believer. A believer doesn't have a myopic, myopic vision and view to this life. I don't, and they don't see this world to be complete without believing in something else. They're not limited to, these, to this world, to this globe, to this universe that we are living in. They see beyond and they believe in beyond this globe, which makes them different than those who don't believe in unseen. And the only thing that they believe are those that they can feel, taste, hear, or see, basically where their five senses are involved. So the believers, they are connected to, to infinite. They're not uh, limited, as we said, to this world rather there are different worlds this alam alam al shuhud we can see and witness and then we have alam al barzakh after we die we enter into another world before this world we were in our the, in our mother's womb before that we were in alam al dhar there are different worlds that we are traveling to one after one from and to one after one after one after one but the believer believes that after death, there is alam which is called barzakh. After that alam, it's another alam which comes the day of qiyamah, the day of judgment, alam al-qiyamah, where all the creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be there and they will go through judgment and inshallah all of us will be from those people who will receive our book of our deeds in our right hands and we will be happy and inshallah we'll enter heaven and not amongst those people who will receive their book of deeds by the left hands from their back and they will be uh, thrown into the hellfire. So there is no, a believer doesn't believe that came to this world just to live this world and have fun and to be entertained, reproduce, eat, work, gain and by the time of death everything finishes. No, believer has much higher goal and much higher purpose in this life. They see, they see beyond this world and they are not limited to this world and to this world the affairs. That's why their price, we can't put a price on a believer. People who are really dedicated 
they are dedicating their lives to the worldly affairs, well, that's how much they're worth. No matter how, how much money they have, well, that's how much they're worth. Billions of dollars, 100 billions of dollars, 200 billions, well, that's how much they're worth. But a believer who believes in the unseen and who believes in the heaven and the infinite rewards and the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give to a believer in heaven, well, that connection will inspire the believer to do right and to avoid falsehood and bad doing. Within Muttaqeen, there's a beautiful sermon by the commander of the faithful Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam within Nahj al-Balagha, which I really recommend. That will be, inshallah, our action plan for this episode. That if you get a chance amongst narrations of Ahl Bayt alayhi salam that you are reading, if you remember, let us remind ourselves that of our action plans from the previous uh, early episodes was that inshallah on a daily basis we have the Quran next to us and a book of hadith either Nahj al-Balagha or Tuhaf al-Uqul that we have introduced. We read a 50 verse of the Holy Quran, verses of the Holy Quran and then we read a translation of those 50 verses and then we take one verse and we think and ponder about it. Inshallah, by the end of the year, 365 narration, uh, verses of the Holy Quran we have read, we have understood, and we have comprehended, and we have brought into our lives, and we'll see how much it changes our lives. And the second was, after that we read one narration, one narration from the lives of Ahlul Bayt salam, and we think and ponder of how to bring that narration into our lives. Amongst those narrations that we read is a good Sermon to read, Sermon of Muttaqeen, Khutbatul Muttaqeen by the commander of the faithful Amir al muminin Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam, where his companion comes to him, Hamam, and tells him, Oh Imam, describe for me a pious individual. So I describe it in a way that I can see it basically, that I can completely imagine that this is a pious person where Allah wants us to be that. That by itself, that ceremony needs at least 30 to 45 episodes elaborating it, discussing it, and uh, basically tafsir of that takes a long time. But I have took a segment from it that uh, it's very beautiful. Imam mentions that a pious individual, the way he clothes himself, the way he talks, the way he walks, the way, he, and so on and so forth, he gives a very, very specific characteristics and the demeanor of the pious individual. Amongst them are two that I have brought it, which relates to الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ because we want to understand what would really mean we, we have to be a believer in unseen in order for us to be pious, in order for the Qur'an to guide us. Imam says, وَالْجَنَّةُ كَمَنْ قَدْ رَآهَا فَهُمْ فِيهَا مُنَعَّمُونَ وَهُمْ وَالنَّارُ كَمَنْ قَدْ رَآهَا فَهُمْ فِيهَا مُعَذَّبُونَ Imam says, pious individual, a pious believer, is a person, everything good that he does, within the interpretation of it, basically, we're elaborating it, everything that he does good, he sees the heaven in front of him, and that's what pushes him forward in doing good deeds. Because good deeds sometimes becomes very difficult to apply into our lives. When a person... It's making us angry for us to able to control our anger. That is a good deed. Well, a pious individual sees heaven in front of him, not the physical, but he believes that much in heaven that by me controlling my anger and my temper, this is where I'm going to end up. Heaven. They're already enjoying the heaven. They don't lie. They don't cheat. They don't use bad language. They don't listen to music. They control their ears and their eyes and their body parts, everything wajibat that they have to do, they do act upon those wajibat. And all the muharramat and forbidden acts, they distance themselves from those acts because they can see the reward of abstaining themselves from sin. So that's how they are motivated, like with their eyes, that's how what they see. And as soon as comes to a sin, and they're about to commit a sin, they see the hellfire and they see the flame of hellfire and that's how much they feared the flame of hellfire and they abstain, abstain themselves from committing 
the sin. This is a characteristic of a pious individual, which is very, very important. It needs practice. Everything that we talk, it needs practice, and without practice, it won't happen, basically. So that needs for us to keep on a daily basis to remind ourselves of where we are within this life. Are we proceeding forward? Are we on the path that we truly believe in unseen? Or no, we do say that we believe in unseen, but when it comes into our action, we have some difficulties. For example, believing in unseen, Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi states, قال النبي صلى الله عليه وآله أعبد الله كأنك تراه Worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way that you see Him. We all understand this is not uh, a disfigurative talk. It's not haqiqi, it's not the true meaning that, okay, pray because we cannot see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is obvious. Pray, Allah, pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah ka'annaka, is as you see Him. Of course we don't see Allah again, but if we were able to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, let's make it tangible. If the representative of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is here and we can see Him, the Imam of our time, Imam Mahdi, may Allah hasten His reappearance. If we can see this Imam of ours and He's here, basically, how do I will pray? Will my prayer will be different or not? Of course. I will make sure that my pronunciation of every word is right. I make sure that my wudu is right. I make sure that everything that I do is right because the Imam is seeing me. Bring it a little bit lower. The representative of the Imam, our maraja, maraja at taqlid If Grand Ayatollah X was standing here and it was my room and I was praying, or I'm about to commit a sin, will I commit it or not? How I will pray? how I will control my anger, and so on and so forth. Every, all the obligatory acts we're discussing, we're just bringing some examples, and all the muharramat and forbidden acts. So, Worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as, as you see Him. If you are not able to see Him, He is seeing you. So that leads a reminder how I worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my prayer, my respect to others, my respect to parents, my respect to brothers and sisters, to community members, to co-workers, classmates, and so on and so forth. If I see myself in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that He is seeing, and not only what I do, He knows of my intention. If my intention was sincerely for Him or other, it would be a completely different scenario. That believing unseen, will really change it will really change our perspective to this world for example believing in, in, in unseen we go unseen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his attributes for example we read the 99 names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Al-Aziz the mighty one the strong the defeater the defeater who is not defeated well, Al-Aziz, the one who gives honor and mighty, it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has all mighty belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I am within my community. I sh if I believe truly and unseen, I shouldn't think that money, wealth, position will give me honor and mighty. Rather, it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that gives me mighty and honor. How will that change my perspective in life? How that will change my characteristic in life? If I believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes me aziz, makes me mighty and honorable and dignifies me and that dignity comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I will respect people because with respecting people, I will gain dignity, not with showing arrogance that I have these belongings. That is very, that's what believing in unseen changes in our perspective. Ar Razak, the total provider. If I believe, again, remember our previous episode, that belief is in heart, and then it comes into our action, in our verbally tongue, and then our action. That if I truly and genuinely and sincerely believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the provider, 
I won't steal. I won't have usury within my day-to-day -day transaction at work. I won't be trying to mix halal and haram money together for me to have more risk. I won't look at the other people's sustenance that they have received. I won't be envying them because I truly believe in the unseen which unseen is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-razzaq. He's the provider. The same Allah that he provided for the other person, he will provide for me. Why should I need to, why should I need to be envying that person? I won't. When I see somebody has something that I don't have, I say, Alhamdulillah, oh Allah, the same way that you gave him, also give me. Allah is the provider. He is the provider. I'm, when I do something for other people, I will do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Allah will provide. And the rest of the 99 names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that would be another action plan. Go, and, go through them, the 99 attributes. Read them. Ponder and think about them. How should I bring that those 99 names into my lives? My life that I should not envy other people, that I should truly believe that Allah is all the provider and He will provide for me. That will definitely change my life, inshallah. We conclude our episode, this episode, by reciting the dua, dua al Faraj, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hasten the appearance of our beloved Imam Mahdi Ajallah Ta'ala Faraj al Sharif, which is the most important dua. Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. Allahumma kun le waliyik al Hajjat ibn al Hassan. Salawatuk alayhi wa ala ba'ih. Fi hadhi sa'atu wa fi kulli sa'ah. Waliya wa hafidha wa qa'idan wa nasira wa dalila wa ayna. Hatta tuskinu wa ardaka tawa wa tumatta'ahu fiha tawila. Barahmatika ya arhamar rahameen. Ooh.